Hello students, you all know that there are different therapeutic approaches in dealing with the clients with different psychological and adjustment problems. For example, psychoanalytic therapy, behavioristic therapy, humanistic therapy, gestalt therapy or some of the therapies. Today, let us discuss on humanistic therapy. You all know that Carl Rogers is the main proponent of humanistic therapy. In fact, his therapy has played a key role in developing even the counseling skills which are used now across the world. Most of his concepts are practiced when a therapist is dealing with the client irrespective of which approach he uses. In fact, Carl Rogers called his therapy as a person-centered therapy and it is also considered as non-directive counseling because humanistic therapy is unique compared to the other traditional approaches or therapies. They have used mostly the directive counseling in which the therapist plays a key role. Whereas in humanistic therapy, Carl Rogers believed the client has to play a vital role rather than the therapist. Now let us see what are the assumptions of human nature as suggested by Carl Rogers? What should be the therapeutic goals? How the relation between the therapist and the client should be in a therapeutic approach? What sort of experiences the client experience in a facilitating climate that is in a therapeutic process? And ultimately, what is expected from this kind of a therapy? Carl Rogers strongly believed that a basic sense of trust in the client's ability is necessary to enable him move forward in a constructive manner and to facilitate this, the therapist should provide appropriate facilitating conditions as this would enable the client's growth. He also believed that if any therapist is able to get to the core of an individual that is to the center point of an individual to the heart of an individual one finds a trustworthy positive center. Carl Rogers firmly maintained that people are trustworthy, resourceful, capable of self-understanding and self-direction. They are also able to make constructive changes and able to live effective and productive lives. When therapists are able to experience and communicate their realness, caring and non-judgmental understanding, significant changes in the client are most likely to occur. Carl Rogers felt there are three attributes which the therapist should possess in order to create a growth promoting climate in which the clients can move forward and become what they are capable of becoming. These attributes are congruence that is genuineness or realness. How a therapist to what extent the therapist is genuine or real. The second attribute is unconditional positive regard which means acceptance and caring of the client. And the third attribute is accurate empathic understanding that is the ability to deeply understand the subjective experiences of the client. If all these attitudes are communicated by the therapist, then the client will become less defensive and more open to themselves and also to the world and they try to behave in pro-social and constructive ways. According to Rogers, the goal of humanistic therapy should be to set the clients free and create those conditions that will enable them to engage in a meaningful self-exploration. This positive view of human nature has significant implications for the practice of therapy. Because the therapist believes the client has an inherent capacity to move away from maladjustment and towards psychological health, the therapist places the primary responsibility on the client. 
the person centered approach rejects the authority of the therapist who knows that he is the best and of the passiveness of the client who merely follows the dictates of the therapist therapy is thus rooted in the client's capacity for awareness and self directed changes in attitudes and behavior Rogers never mentioned that the person centered theory is a fixed and completed approach to therapy he hoped that others would view his theory as a set of tentative principles relating to how the therapy should progress but never considered this as a dogma rogers and wood described the characteristics that distinguish the person centered approach from other models the, these characteristics include the person centered approach focuses on the client's responsibility and capacity to discover ways to really encounter the reality they feel clients who know themselves best are the ones to discover more appropriate behavior for themselves based on a growing self awareness the second characteristic is rogers felt person centered approach is one of the examples for a psychotherapy in promoting constructive personal relationship people who experience psychotherapeutic growth in and outside the session can experience this even with other people though they are not from the psychological background if they can show the caring understanding and realness towards the client the third characteristic is the relationship of the counselor who is very congruent accepting and empathetic will definitely facilitate a therapeutic change for the client the fourth characteristic is the person centered theory mentions that the therapist function is to be present and to be accessible to the client and make him focus on the here and now experience that is do not make him relive the past experiences always or do not allow him to worry about the future but enable him to focus on the here and now one of the therapeutic goals of humanistic therapy is achieving a greater degree of independence and integration for the client this therapy focuses on the person not on the person's presenting problem according to rogers the aim of humanistic therapy is not merely to solve problems but to assist the clients in their growth process so that they can better cope with their problems which they are facing now and also the future problems the underlying aim of humanistic therapy is to provide a climate which is very conducive to help the individual become a fully functioning person however call rogers says before the clients reach to that particular goal that is fully functioning individual they must first get behind the masks they wear which they develop through the process of socialization when these facades are worn away during the therapeutic process a different kind of person emerges from behind the pretenses so once they remove these masks and try to experience the reality try to present themselves in a more open way they develop a kind of a personality like called it as fully functioning individual and they are also becoming increasingly self actualized as they develop some of the characteristics these characteristics which the client develops include openness to experience a trust in themselves an internal source of evaluation and a willingness to continue growing so encouraging these characteristics is the basic goal of the person centered therapy another important feature of humanistic therapy is 
The therapist does not choose specific goals for the client. They believe that clients in a relationship with a facilitating therapist should have the capacity to define and clarify their own goals. The humanistic therapists believe the attitudes of person-centered therapists rather than their knowledge, theories or techniques facilitate personality change in the client. So, if you take other therapeutic approaches like behavior modification or cognitive approaches, they use number of techniques. They try to practice these techniques with the clients, give them the feedback and then modify some of the techniques to suit their needs. But humanistic therapists feel the attitudes of a therapist are more important rather than the technical know-how. Another role of the therapist is humanistic therapists consider themselves as an instrument of change. When they encounter the client on a person to person level, their function is to establish a therapeutic climate that help the clients grow. The person centered therapist creates a helping relationship in which clients experience the necessary freedom to explore areas of their life that are either denied to awareness or distorted. When the therapist tries to show the important attributes in making the client accept the changes, naturally the clients try to accept whatever they are denying so far and the experiences which they are distorting, they try to accept them. They also become, that is the clients become less defensive and more open to possibilities within themselves and in the world. So, Rogers believes first and foremost, the therapist must be willing to be real, genuine, congruent in his relationship with the clients. Instead of viewing clients in preconceived diagnostic categories, the therapist meets them on a moment to moment experiential basis and enters their world. Through the therapist's attitudes of genuine caring, respect, acceptance and understanding, clients are able to loosen their defenses and rigid perceptions and move on to a higher level of personal functioning. When the client comes to a counseling, naturally they come with an expectation to change some of the aspects of their behavior, be it in their thoughts, their feelings or in their behavior. Whether this change occurs or not depends upon the client's perceptions of their own experience in therapy and of the counselor's basic attitudes towards the client. If the counselor creates a climate which is very conducive to self-exploration, clients will have the opportunity to explore the full range of their experience which includes their feelings, beliefs, behavior and worldview that is how they are perceiving the world around them. Most of the clients come to the counseling session in a state of incongruence that is a discrepancy exists between their self perception and their experience in reality. For example, Harsha, a college student may see himself as a future physician, yet his below average grades might exclude Harsha from medical school. The discrepancy between how Harsha sees himself that is the self concept or how he would like to view himself that is ideal self concept and the reality of his poor academic performance may result in anxiety and personal vulnerability. This can provide the necessary motivation to enter therapy. This vulnerability makes the client 
realize the discrepancy and he wants to overcome the kind of a discrepancy. Harsha must perceive that a problem exists or at least that he is uncomfortable with his present psychological adjustment and he wants to explore possibilities for change. Another reason why clients seek therapy is a feeling of basic helplessness, powerlessness and an inability to make decisions or effectively direct their own lives. They may hope to find the way through the guidance of the therapist. Within the person centered framework, however, clients soon learn that they can be responsible for themselves in the relationship and they can learn to be freer by using the relationship to gain greater self understanding. As counseling progresses, the clients are able to explore a wider range of beliefs and feelings. Probably they never had an opportunity to focus on their inner feelings with the fear of ashamed or with the fear of guiltness. However, now once they experience a conducive climate, these clients can express their fears, anxiety, guilt, shame, hatred, anger and other emotions that they felt were too negative to accept and incorporate into their self structure. That is the clients are coming to terms with reality with regard to their inner feelings. As the therapy progresses, clients distort less and move to a greater acceptance and integration of conflicting and confusing feelings. They increasingly discover aspects within themselves which have been hidden all these years. The characteristics of the therapeutic relationship that are conducive to create a suitable psychological climate in which the client will experience the freedom necessary to initiate personality change are first of all there are two people in psychological contact. The first person that is client is experiencing incongruence or anxious. The second person that is the therapist is congruent or integrated in the relationship. The therapist experiences unconditional positive regard and acceptance for the client. The therapist experiences an empathic understanding of the client's internal frame of reference and strives to communicate this experience to the client. The communication to the client of the therapist's empathic understanding and acceptance is to a minimal degree achieved. Once again, the attributes of the therapist form a central part of the therapeutic relationship that is congruence or genuineness, unconditional positive regard and acceptance and accurate empathic understanding. The person centered approach is used extensively in training professionals and para professionals who work with people in a variety of settings. This approach emphasizes staying with clients as opposed to getting ahead of them with interpretations. The beauty of this therapeutic approach is even people without advanced psychological education are able to benefit by translating the therapeutic conditions of genuineness, empathic understanding, unconditional positive regard into both their personal and professional lives. The person centered approach is being especially applicable in crisis intervention. Many people in the helping professions like nursing, medicine, education, are the first on the scene in a variety of crises. 
Similarly, just think of certain specific life events that can lead to crisis. It could be an unwanted pregnancy, an illness or the loss of a loved one. Even if the helping person is not a trained mental health professional, he or she can do much if the basic attitudes are present. When people are in crisis, one of the first steps is to give them an opportunity to fully express themselves. Sensitive listening, hearing and understanding are essential at this point. Although a person's crisis is not likely to be resolved by one or two contacts with a helper, but definitely such contacts pave the way for openness to receiving help later. Genuine support, caring and non-possessive warmth can go a long way in building bridges that can motivate people to do something to work through and resolve a crisis. People in trouble do not need false reassurances that everything will be alright. The presence of and psychological contact with a caring person can do much to bring about healing. And the humanistic therapy believes in this kind of an assumption that even without following any technical techniques but by merely showing some of the important characteristics or attributes and part of the helper, we can help the client in resolving his psychological problems or any in dealing with any crisis. In a nutshell, humanistic therapy presents a positive view of human nature. It creates an optimism among the therapists and also among the people that any problem can be resolved by the person who is suffering himself. This generally leads to a motivation on the part of the client to focus on the problem and then resolve the situation. This humanistic therapist believes that every individual is capable of analyzing, understanding and also finding out the solutions for one's problem. But all that is needed is a conducive environment and a caring attitude. Three attributes that are continuously emphasized by the Rogers are congruence, unconditional positive regard and accurate empathic understanding. The focus is more on therapist attributes rather than techniques in order to enable the client to move forward and facilitate them to reach a position which they are capable of. So the goal of humanistic therapy is to create facilitating situations and help the client in a meaningful self-exploration. The, the humanistic therapy focuses on the person but not on the problem. The humanistic therapists also believe that the therapy goal is not to solve the problems but assist the clients in their growth process so that the clients themselves can face their present problems and also the future problems. Once we help them remove their masks, every client is capable of reaching the self-actualized state and eventually to a fully functioning individual. When they reach that position, they are able to show the characteristics like openness to experience, trust in themselves, can self-explore and evaluate and also willingness to grow continuously. The goals are also not set by the humanistic therapist, unlike in other therapies, but here the client himself will set the goals once he realizes what is to be done. In humanistic therapy, the attitudes of the therapist are vital and therapists merely act as facilitators, as agents of change. Once they show these characteristics, clients will become less defensive and more open to the experiences around. The ultimate goal of the therapy is when the clients 
come to the therapy in a state of incongruence make them go out of the therapy session with a state of congruence and in this process it is not the therapist who plays a directive role but it is the client who plays an active role this particular therapy that is humanistic therapy can be used even by non psychologists as they are focusing more on the characteristics of a helper rather than on any techniques naturally any person who possess the attributes mentioned by the rogers can become good helpers to the people around in fact the world requires many helpers in order to reduce the conflicts experienced by the people